Cinema 4D and motion graphics have always been rather synonymous because MoGraph is the flagship toolset of Cinema 4D. In the scene nodes, uh, that has been replaced by what's called distributions and some other things on the side. We are going to talk about distributions right now. Now, if I go to my asset list here and click on distributions, you will see all these are different types of distributions and we have one more in the operators which is the distribution op so let me bring this in let me bring in a primitive I'm gonna bring in a primitive you take the output from the primitive put it in the input of the distribution and connect this to the scene and you get a huge white blank that's because the cube is too big I'm gonna make it 20 in each dimension and there you go we have a linear distribution of cubes now, one thing to remember is that whether you connect the distribution before the primitive or after, it doesn't make a difference. So let me show you what that means. I'm going to disconnect, move it on this side, and put the distribution in the operator stream of the primitive, and you have exactly the same result. So depending on what you're doing, you may put it this way or that way. Now let's go and open up the little arrow. You can see all this is the data associated to whatever is happening to the cube. We have colors, we have the arrays. If you click on the arrays and just open this up, you will see it contains matrix and color index and ratio. And these are the attribute types. It's good to know, but you have these independently as well. The ratio is a float 64, the matrix and so forth. Anyhow, so if I click on the distribution node, you will see that it has this very, very weird name here. Uh, that is temporary as far as I know. And uh, basically this is a linear distribution. So if you go to linear, nothing's gonna change. And you can play around with the values and see what happens. Fantastic. Let's go and select another one, edge. So I'm gonna show you later on a few more details about these, but the one that says edge the one that says polygon center and the one that says a vertex require some sort of a geometry input. So let's go to vertex for now. See, nothing happens because we need a geometry input. So I can create another primitive and I'm going to get the geometry from the primitive. I can't use the operator stream in the geometry. You can see it can't be connected. Get the geometry from here, put it here, and now it's going to create clones distributions on the actual vertices. So if I change the segments of the cube, I get more of these. And uh, the other modes, uh, the edge and the polygon center, work in similar ways. Uh, let's go to polygon center. I have to reconnect the geometry, and now we have cubes at the polygon centers of my cube. Fantastic. We also have uh, things like uh, grid, uh, which is basically our grid mode in uh, the cloner in MoGraph, and you can play around with these. The colors you see currently are based on the UVW position of the cube, so you can use that data to find out exactly within the bounding volume of all these clones here, within the grid, which position each of these clones has. And uh, it's uh, red, green for the Y, and blue for the Z, just like our little axes. So everything's very easy to find, and that will be U, V, and W. So then we have all these other things. So the arrays is a compounded version, array mode of all the data. Index is an index iteration with the indices of each and every one of these clones. We have the ratio, which is uh, pretty much a normalized number from zero to one, depending on the index of each and every one of the clones. We have the color, which is based on the UVW position. We have the matrices, which are the position scales and rotations of each individual clone. And then we have children, which is a totally different thing. It has information about the children, about uh, each and every one of these clones and is used in very particular circumstances. So this is what the distribution op does. And uh, pretty much it's an automated way to create copies. And uh, you can make your own distributions uh, by going to, let me turn this off, let's go to distribution, and we have the distribution group. If you put the distribution group in here, then this group allows you to create your own nodal layout and drive these parameters. I'm not going to do anything with that quite yet, so let me delete it from here. So now let's go into a few more of the specifics, and I have a scene where I've added all these nodes in my node graph. So here you can see all the available distributions. So I need to tell you how they are different from the distribution operator. If you select any of these, 
these have the same settings as the distribution operator has, but each one has its own function. And the only thing it outputs is the distribution data, which currently is not available. We need to unpack this data if we want to see the individual channels. Now, this is a very good segue to talk about containers. What you see here are container outputs. And if you go down here, you will see it says array container. If you click on any of these, these are array containers. What is a container? Well, a container is a stream of data that carries more than one type of data. And it's always synchronized. So the relevant parts are always in the same index. How do you find what data is in here? Well, we need something called decompose container. So if you use a decompose container and drag any of these distribution datas over there, you will see now this allows you to see what's available within this container. This particular one creates matrix, color, index, and ratio. And this applies to pretty much all of uh, these distributions. Now, you can take any of these data streams and use it for whatever you want. So let me give you a very quick example. I'm going to use the linear. Now, if you're trying to connect this, it won't work because you need to disconnect one first and disconnect the other. I think that's a temporary little mishap and uh, it will be fixed in the future. So let's go and put some cubes in the data created by this linear distribution. So let's bring in a primitive, put here a cube. Let's make it small, 10, 10, and 10. And what I'm going to do is use a matrix operator, just like we did earlier, I'm going to take the matrix from here, which is an iteration of matrices. And I'm going to put the cube in here and take this and put it in my scene out. And there you go. So all the data generated by this distribution, the linear distribution, creates an iteration of matrices that contain scale and uh, whatnot and moves each cube in its appropriate position. And this is the way to use these distributions. You will use them to get any piece of data. You can use the distribution op or you can use these depending on what you want to do. So that's not a biggie. You can use either. So let me just delete all these for now just to clear up things. So let's go and take a look at these. So linear, linear transformed, it's very similar. You can even do your experimentations using the distribution op. The data is identical. We have the grid which creates a normal grid, a grid offset, which is very similar to the honeycomb mode in the cloner. We have radial, we have spiral. Then we have these more complex that create uh, fractals like Mandelbrot, which is a two-dimensional fractal, or Mandelbulb, which is a three-dimensional fractal. Then we have vertex, polygon center, and edge, which require geometry input to work. We have our little decomposed container here. And then we have these three, the trefoil, the distribution group and the trigonometry. The distribution group, as I said earlier, has these preset outputs. But as far as the trefoil and the trigonometry, these are nothing more than assets. So I can select it. I can go to the asset and edit asset. So someone made this using a distribution group, did some math and whatnot, and created this particular distribution. And that is something you may do yourselves, just like the setups we did with a spiral and all that. You can actually put that in a distribution group and create something that always exists within your Cinema 4D asset list. And that is the upside of uh, creating these assets. And of course, you can share it and do whatever you want with it. So the trigonometry and the trefoil are some preset distribution groups that someone made for your convenience. Now, one last thing I want to mention is that although we've only seen the distributions used to create clones, you can actually create any kind of data. You can even create points. As long as you use the data it provides, you can put it anywhere you want. Let me give you a little example. I'm going to use the grid and uh, from the grid, I'm going to grab using a decomposed container my matrices. Fantastic. And uh, from the matrices, I'm going to decompose and uh, bring out the parameters of the matrix. Fantastic. Now I'm going to do something which is a bit 
ahead of its time, but um, we will deal with this in one of the other tutorials. I'm going to go and create some geometry, some points. So I need to set some geometry. Geometry, property, set. And then I need a geometry operator to put this geometry and bundle it as an object. Put the geometry here. Again, I'm going to show you all the details uh, later on. And I'm going to take the translation, which is pretty much just positions, and put them in the iteration over here. And when I go to points mode, you will see that now I've generated a bunch of points using that distribution. So I'm only showing this to you to show you that the data generated by the distributions can be used in any context you wish. And believe me when I say that the distributions are extremely fast. So we're going to see more examples as we go along. These are the distributions. This is how they work overall. And we are going to put them in action in the next video.